I can get on these people's nerves. Good afternoon. Welcome to Teacher Talk. I am Ruth, and this is... I'm Phyllis. How are you? I'm doing great. So we are here at the beautiful campus of Hawassi College. Yes. So Miss Phyllis is actually teaching the Upward Bound. Can you tell us a little bit about your activities in Upward Bound? Yes. Children start out every day at 8.15 and they go to breakfast and then at 9 o'clock they have three morning classes and then the afternoon after lunch they have three evening classes. Uh, this year they're, some of the things they're learning is sign language and history and of course math. I'm doing geometry, I'm doing algebra 2, I'm doing pre-cal. Then, of course, they have their drama and they have... So um, are you teaching them new material or is it I'm with you? No, I'm teaching them new material. These children have never had these courses. It's brand new. And I'm so proud of my kids today because they all got what I learned today. Which was? Well, we did, we did evaluating functions in pre-calculus and mm -hmm. algebra 2. We did uh, factoring. And then in geometry, we did... Parallel lines with transversals and identifying all the angles and finding missing angles. That and sounds hard. Well, as you can see, uh, Phyllis teaches math. So <laughs> <laughs> I am a French and German teacher, actually, just in case anybody's wondering. Well, she can also speak Spanish, so don't so, let her fool you on that one. Yeah, well, so yesterday we went to the P16 Summer Summit at Cleveland State Community College. How do you feel about that? Oh, I loved it. As a so matter of fact. What are some takeaways that you had from uh, Some of the takeaways that I had is mm -hmm. that technology is really something important with these students. And we have to learn how to teach differently. Mm -hmm. You have to learn now to, teaching is not like it was when you and I started teaching mm -hmm. or nor when we were in school because these kids mm -hmm. are so used to technology and they're so used to playing games that that's something that they have to do all the time. They play mm -hmm. games. And you have to get their interest, and you have to pretty much change things up about. So speaking every of games, we did a little presentation yesterday, and part of it was on GimKit. So we actually had a Google Hangout with John Feinzelber, the creator and developer mm -hmm. of GimKit. That was pretty awesome. Wasn't that it? was pretty awesome. He's a senior in high school, and that's kind of hard to upcoming believe. Upcoming senior. Upcoming mm -hmm. senior. And he's already created this game. Have you looked at his uh, school's website? Yes, I did. His school is totally awesome. And so they're basically project-based learning all the time. I found it amazing, actually, that they only go to class three days a week, and two days a week they have internships. Right. So it's real life, real learning. Mm -hmm. It's hands-on so, learning, which I think that we need more of in today's society. I think students mm -hmm. need more hands-on learning. Did you see that they had a waiting list? Yes, I did. That's amazing. That funny, yes. Yeah. So that's amazing. we are actually planning on visiting Josh's school. So that is going to be an exciting report. Right. And we'll have to talk about that after we visit the school. Mm -hmm. That will be great. So the there are two things that really stuck out for me at uh, yesterday's conference. The first one was on the passport idea. So I actually oh, I liked the passport idea. That was actually I wonderful. Where you made have some, your children do passports. I made a prototype of a passport. Did you? If you can see that. Um, so this so we'll German one here. Well, the first part of it I got for free on ta Teachers Pay Teachers, and then I translated the thing into French because I teach French and German. So the first part, um, the students have to fill out basic information about you know their uh, height like their and favorite color. favorites and right. eye color, hair color, things like that. And then there are 25 spots where the teacher would stamp. So the I have these. Mm -hmm. So I actually have these correlating with the actual can do statements. So um, in modern foreign language, we have standards in the state of Tennessee, but also we go by the actual standards. Mm -hmm. So there happens to be 25, and these range from novice low, novice mid, novice high to intermediate low and intermediate mid. So most of our students around here, well, we're going to be beginners, so they will probably not arrive at intermediate mid, but I am giving them a chance with these passports. So for each one of the can-do statements, if you can see that, 
they would get a stamp if they can prove to me that they are able to do these things. Can they do these things? So some of this stuff is super easy and some is not. So for example, when number eight says, I can write lists and memorize memorized phrases on familiar topics. So that sounds pretty simple, right? That does so, sound simple. Yeah. Now, some of them look pretty hard to me. Mm, well, it just goes up from, you know, it starts out very easy. First day of school, you know, some of them may be able to do some of these already, but then in order to arrive at intermediate mid, you have to be fairly good. You really do, because mm -hmm. number 22, I can make presentations on a wide variety of familiar yeah. topics using yeah. connected sentences. I can imagine doing that in German, a long French. So by the end of the school year, perhaps they will be able to do that. Let's hope I so. hope they can get mm -hmm. all 25. That would be wonderful. So if they filled this out, then their name would go into a rifle of some sort, and they would get a big prize. So that might encourage them to do it. Yeah. So I love the idea of passports. And then another thing that I was really interested in lately was the escape room challenges. So yeah, no, I, I like the escape room challenges. Came up hey, with a little, up with one? Yeah, I came up with a little prototype of that thing too. So in escape room, you want to give them a task that they do not know how to do yet. They have to discover it. So I made out four challenge questions. Okay, so these are pretty hard because they're going to be in French. And these kids have never even had French before, so they have to figure out what this means and what the missing words are. So this is not something you can Google. No, this isn't something you can Google, mm -hmm. as you can tell. So they would do these in groups, one at a time, and then uh, the teacher would... Is this where I say that means three? <laughs> no, that does oh, not that mean three mean at three? all. No, oh, that's I'm an thinking accent. Spanish. That's an accent. <laughs> no, three so. means very. Yeah, yeah. French. Yeah. French is different. Ah, uh -huh, this so. has to do with school. It does, but because I see your school's name, but I have no idea what that means. Mm -hmm. So what they do is they answer. They try to answer the question, and then they come and ask me if the question is correct or not. So I would verify this one question at a time, and then they get this code. This QR code leads to a Google form, and on this Google form, they have to enter the answers to the four questions, which by mm -hmm. then they should know, and then this generates the certificate, and this certificate says, congratulations, you met the challenge. The code is 1452, so I have an actual lockbox. Like a toolbox when you go to Walmart and get one. We do need to go to Walmart and get one. I was thinking about that yesterday. So you get a combination lock with four numbers, and right. this would be the code for it. So then they unlock the box. Hopefully they did it correctly. But if they get the certificate, then it is correct. Okay. But So the certificate will generate the correct code. Okay. And inside the box, they will find some kind of prize. Oh, well, that's good. So, well, so are are you going to have like different groups? I see where that says group one. Or is well, this just group. I mean, oh, if they have different codes on the no, I think they all get the same they one because the they same. will not finish at the same time. So we so just lock it right back up. So you just lock it right back up and, and put the prizes in. Well, I know that you like doing the mm -hmm. uh, where they move around to different tables and so forth, and I like mm -hmm. that too. Mm -hmm. I like them doing different things in my classroom. Mm -hmm. But yes, I was very interested in the. Uh, the skate challenge. So I really I love that. that and really we good. were talking yesterday about how you make flashcards, and you know the easiest way to make flashcards, of course, is print them off a Quizlet. I yes, had completely I mean, forgotten about that. All you do is go. That's like how you I open make my one flashcards. Sets, and you go where the dots are on the right side, and so then you click print, and then one of the options is index cards, three by five cards. And the thing that I like yeah. about GimKit is you can take your Quizlet and transfer it to GimKit. Oh, that, is, that is just so easy. And then let's not forget the fact that we did some non-technology games. We mm -hmm, used Jenga, mm -hmm. and I think they enjoyed Jenga. I know the kids in my class enjoy Jenga. They enjoyed all your game. That was awesome. Oh, and then <laughs> then uh, the cabbage let's game. Let's not forget yeah. Plickers. Mm -hmm. I think our audience even enjoyed Plickers. Mm -hmm. No one cringed or anything. They were really getting into it. What I thought was funny is I was watching people look at other people's answers to see if they had the same answer, and they were trying to turn their their cards the same yeah, direction, and I the cards are different things. Yeah, they didn't quite all know the answers to our Plickers questions, but it was kind of hard. Well, so, yeah. you know, we just randomly really, got questions off the internet, you know. Yeah, we used trivia, and some of the questions were really, really hard. So, 
yeah. yeah. Oh, do you we know, didn't. it's always good to be challenged. That is true. That mm-hmm. is true. Mm-hmm. But but we did have a good time, and they had a wonderful lunch. Let's mm-hmm. not forget to oh, put out goodness. there that their yes. lunch, and you get eight hours PD. Mm-hmm. Plus, so we would highly recommend you participate uh, at the P16 Summer Summit at Cleveland State. But next year, maybe they will be that's combining in Cleveland, it. Tennessee, by the way. With yeah, <laughs> not Ohio. <laughs> not Ohio. Right, so we're in Tennessee. they will be combining it with Bradley County Schools, possibly. They're in the talking stages about that. But no matter, it's definitely uh, worth going to. So how are your books coming along in with the book well, creator? Well, they're working on them. And uh, yesterday, I don't think they got very much done at all mm-hmm. because they mm-hmm. kept telling me they learned math while I was going to the P16 Summit. And oh, I said, what they? kind of math did mm-hmm. you learn? Mm-hmm. And I think the math they learned was is how long a video one was. Residents? One of the residents. Mm-hmm. And I think they uh, learned how long a video was, if you know what I mean. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Interesting. And uh, and today we got to use for the first time, they finally figured out how to connect yeah. the smart board because the smart board was offline. So they connected the mm-hmm. smart board. So now I'm using the smart I board in my classes did not every know day. They had, oh, I knew that was up there somewhere. But yeah, it's up, it's up it's on in the, the top in store. It's in the room that I'm using right now. And tomorrow okay. uh, with Upper Bound, we're going to Bryan College. Mm-hmm. That's one of the colleges we're going to go visit, and I get okay. to go. Fantastic. So I'm excited about mm-hmm. going. The kids are excited about me going. Is the weather supposed to be good? The weather is supposed to be good. And God. then um, we get to stop and eat, and one of the students works where we're going to stop at and eat. So I'm excited about that because okay. he wants to introduce me oh, to everyone. Okay. Fantastic. So if well, Bryan College is a very nice place. It is a very mm. nice place and Upward Bound is great. Mm. And I talked this week and I forgot to tell you, I talked this week with another school. Mm-hmm. Knoxville College is trying to get started back and they're starting with classes this fall. They're gonna have just okay. online classes and they're gonna see in a few years if they can do an upward bound program again. They used to do oh. upward bound and I did oh. not know that in Knoxville. Okay. So I'm not sure who does it in the Knoxville area Mm -hmm. now, but we have children from all over the area. I was also impressed with one of the grants from Verizon yesterday that one of the schools got. I believe that was Polk County Mm -hmm. that got that grant to have iPads in every child's hand. Yes, uh, I do not have access to an iPad lab, but... I don't know. I'll tell you the truth. I don't miss them because we're using Chromebooks and I That's prefer Chromebooks use. actually over iPads. They're not as finicky and they don't break as easily. We have two, two computer labs in our school and mm-hmm. then we have mm-hmm. one Chromebook lab and we're supposed mm-hmm. to possibly get another Chromebook lab. So I'm looking forward to that. Mm-hmm. Also at my school, we're starting a STEM school. We're starting STEM as one of our exciting. projects so mm-hmm. that's exciting we do okay. this thing called future city mm-hmm. and if you guys want to know about it just go mm-hmm. to just type in future city and look it's for middle school students and okay. it's absolutely wonderful it's a great challenge so is it just from the state of tennessee or can anybody no it's participate? from all states mm-hmm. all okay. states can participate yeah. okay so um, that's definitely something the middle school teachers could look into that's Definitely. All right. So we are coming to the end of our 15-minute broadcast. So we would like to thank you for listening to Teacher Talk. And we will do it again in a couple of weeks. That's correct. Well, actually, I'll be in Spain. So maybe well, in a month. In Spain. <laughs> so it'll be a month. So maybe one month from now. Right. She'll be in Spain. <laughs> and there's no telling where I'm going to be in two weeks. Actually, mm. I'm going to be in Savannah, Georgia. Oh, that and I'm good. surprising my Upward Bound students. They mm-hmm. have no idea that I'm going to show up. Oh, wow. Shocker. (laughs) Well, you have fun on your trip, Rick, and we'll see you in about a month.